I, I haven't cut rocks in so long, I don't even know how to start the video. I'm struggling with like um, the intro stuff. Basically, we're cutting rocks. Excited. Today we're going to be doing some rock cutting. I've got a whole bunch of different rocks that we're going to be cutting from all these videos that I've been uh, filming over the last year and a half. And some rocks that I've had sitting in nooks and crannies in the house. First off, I'm going to get this thing. Oh. Okay. The real reason why I was butchering that intro is because I set out to make a very different video than what you're watching now. Don't get me wrong. I wanted to make a cutting video. I just thought I'd be telling a different story. We're going to be cutting rocks that I was too scared to cut and rocks that were way too big for any saw that I've owned. But first we're going to be looking at this beautiful thunder egg that Ian found and what Lockie found inside his. Yeah, pretty much. It's going to be your biggest face. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Oh, I was always thinking you've got on the bigger face. Yeah. The only downside of having a rock everyone loves is that everyone else knows the best way to cut it. All right, so while Ian's cutting that one, I'll show you what Lockie's looks like. It's already been cut, two of the rocks, beautiful ones. This is them when they were first collected, and even then they were stunning, but what's inside is amazing. Now this is gonna sound sacrilege, so bear with me, but luck has so much more to do with what's inside a rock than what the experts might let you believe. You're lucky to have found the rock in the first place, but you're lucky to have chosen to line it up on the blade just the way you did. And even with all of that and all the experience you have, you're lucky that something happened on the inside that you were able to expose. Experience has everything to do with it as well. And I mean, Lockie wouldn't have got this cut without experience and using the knowledge he has. But in reality, what's inside that stone, that's up to nature. And then you have some rocks that once you've looked at them, it wouldn't have mattered which way you cut it. They just cut perfectly. To see this when you remove two sides of the rock from the blade, that's a feeling that everybody wants and you never forget. But that's not always the case. I think you know where I'm going with this. Tonight, we're gonna to be looking at rocks from both camps. The ones that you cut open and they take your breath away. And then the other ones. The ones that once you see inside, you're left wondering, what the hell happened? And in my case, how am I gonna show this to people? What? What happened? How does that, oh, are you kidding? Like something so amazing. Oh, I damn, sorry. <laughs> Wow. Like, I'm surprised by it. I got a text one day from my neighbor who feeds my dog, and she's like, what's that beautiful rock in the garage? When I found out it was this one she was talking about, I couldn't understand why. But then I got to thinking about it and realized maybe it's because she knew less than us. Not saying we know a whole bunch, but we've cut so many rocks. And when that happens, you tend to forget to look at the things that a few years earlier, would have really made you go, yeah, that's gorgeous. And a few years earlier, I may not have showed you guys this rock, but I kind of had to own up to it. We got so excited when we found it. We thought there was gonna be cinnabar galore. There wasn't, but this rock still had a story. And honestly, it was a pleasure to tell it. Other rocks you may not have seen cut too often on this channel, are big ones, unless it's with a concrete cutter. But luckily for me, I was able to know this rock was in good hands 
because my mate Silverback came to the rescue with a 24-inch saw, a whole bunch of experience, and went through it with a fine-tooth comb. So it's, it's even though there. it's not the, you yeah. know, it's not what you expected. Yeah, it's still pretty though. It isn't is it? still nice. Gosh, that blade but gets it, a good cut on there. It does. And yeah, as much as we tried to convince ourselves that it was still beautiful, you could hear it in our voice. We were like, oh, I thought there was going to be more in there. But over a few nights, I'd walk outside and have another look at it. After the initial disappointment, I'd wet it down, rub my hand over it, look at the intricacies of like what nature made. I couldn't make that if I tried. And yet something about this rock, whenever I looked at it, inspired me to think of different things I could do with rocks. It inspired creativity in me. And for a rock to inspire creativity in a human, I think that's kind of rad. Like, kind of like a muse. The other thing, it looks really cool when it's backlit. <laughs> Now, while I'm getting all philosophical about rocks and stuff, and I promise I will stop, this next one is the best analogy. I've got a um, potentially rad rock. Yeah. You see all the um, petroidal? Actually, yeah, it's going to be a sick rock. But it's got a cow pat on it. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes you just got to go through the shit to find the beauty. If it wasn't for these petroidals, I wouldn't have picked this one up. And I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm going to call it a jazz bagot, but I've never seen those lines or dots on the inside. And then when you backlight this one, although it's terrible quality, it's gorgeous what nature can do. Look at it. Now I've been sitting on a few rocks where I either didn't have a saw big enough or I was too worried about somebody else seeing me cutting it and saying, dude, why did you do that? I figured now's the time to give it a try and back myself. And if they're horrible inside, I just won't show you. <laughs> I think this is a rad one. I really do. I really do. I'm going to, I haven't touched it yet. Can you see it? Can you see that? What? Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty. Okay, hold on. Oh, stop it. Look at you. All right, this one is going to be one that I'm going to try and focus a little bit more on how I cut it. I want to keep the troidals, but I also want to see in there. So it's have your cake and eat it too type of scenario. I'm do a slicey mix, slice, slice across there. One this way and then one that way. So it'll be like a bevel, bevel. And then I'll just tidy up any things as I go. And then I think we'll have a look at all of the end results of the rocks. So I filmed this because I thought those first three big rocks weren't good enough. One by one, they didn't have what I thought they were going to have inside them. And then I thought this video wouldn't be good enough. To say it almost defeated me is an understatement. It was touch and go there for a bit, <laughs> but it looks good. Cutting rocks is meant to be enjoyed. You're gonna make mistakes. The rocks aren't gonna be exactly what you were expecting when you found them but enjoy that whole journey. And if you make a mistake, it's all good. I waited like, I think it's almost three years since I found this rock. And I'm glad I did because I enjoyed it more. I didn't have to rush into it, but also the rock basically guided me with what I had to do. I didn't need to be as scared. It's all part of being a rock hound and lapidary. Lapidary? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just waffling to fill the void. Oh, look at this. Yeah, see, that's beautiful. 
Pretty sure that's moss. That's the other thing. Don't be afraid of taking a guess at what something is. Because I guarantee you this community will tell you if it is or isn't. But they'll also guide you. Listen to others. They know what they're doing. And try new things. Get creative with your rocks and how you cut them. Some rocks are better cut in half and some are better with the outside sort of sliced off. Some don't need to be cut. It's up to you what you do with your rocks. Just enjoy them, get creative and always wonder. I think wondering what's going on helps drive creativity. Last of all, don't let one bad rock stop you from cutting more. If I did that, I wouldn't have been able to finish this video. And like I said, it almost defeated me, genuinely. I had to let go of what my expectations of this video were and let it be what it was. I am so grateful for you guys. I did it, I finished the video. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, everybody. And um, like, subscribe, do what you want to. If you do, just, just know that I, I might have videos come out a little bit late sometimes, but when I do put them out, I hope you enjoy them. <laughs>